Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club, your local Holden Certified Service Centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online. G'day, I'm Fletch, and welcome as I bring you back to Atherton, west of Cairns in far north Queensland. It's on again, the Atherton Car Bike and Swap Meet for 2023 in this week's Classic Restos. <laughs> This event in far north Queensland is now possibly one of the largest in this part of the state. It's a reflection on how strong our classic vehicle movement is. And it's thanks to this bloke here, Don Blanford, owner of Atherton Auto Wreckers. Donnie is one of those selfless blokes, the guy that often puts himself last but make sure everyone else is okay. The chaplaincy also plays a big part contributing to this event. We are at the Atherton High School and the chaplaincy gets into overdrive here looking after the needs of many kids. And in this day and age, that is more important than ever. This event welcomes anything with a piston. If you can drive it and you can bring it, get it here. It's the place where everyone is on the same page. It's an event that just works. Having arrived in Cairns and driving up through the Gillies, the rainforest is spectacular. Papua New Guinea is only around a thousand kilometres from here. This area was used for jungle training in World War II. The history up around here is vast, but now it's time to get on with the show. And first cab off the rank here at the Atherton Bike car and swap meet. How are you, Ron? Yeah, not too bad, Fletch. Yourself? Good, mate. Good. Are you having fun so far? Oh, yeah. Terrific, eh? Now, Ron, you've got a pretty special car here. Now, from a purist's perspective, we've got a 1964 EH. It's got a V6 in it, so that's the purist side of things where some might think, oh, what's the V6 doing in the EH? But it's a, it's a special car in terms of some interesting history. It's also an S4 car, so that in itself is... There's quite a lot of significance there. Um, tell us about some of the history of the car, Ron. Well, um, I was a plumbing inspector in Townsville and uh, had to go out to a job. And the chap owned this car underneath the house and he had to shift it. So um, he said to me um, that it was for sale and I said, well, that's good, no worries at all. He says, it's an ex-Group N car from Tasmania. I said, that's terrific. Where's the logbook? He says, oh, that book with all the racing and everything like that in it. Yeah, he said, that old book. I said, yeah, that old book. He said, oh, I threw that away about 20 years ago. <laughs> but the shell was, basically, that's all it was. It was a shell. Um, I took it home and um, basically restored it. The car itself is unique in that it's got two fuel fillers, one on the left-hand side and one on the right-hand side. So there weren't too many EHs like that. And then I always liked V6s, so I bought a police interceptor, just transferred everything straight into it. Best of both worlds, one of Holden's biggest sellers back in the day, the EH. And even today, I've said many times on Classic Restos before, still a nice style of a car so many decades later. It, it turns heads, and a lot of the older generation, everyone learnt to drive in an EH. Such a nice shaped car and they're the sort of car that lends themselves to some modifications as well. Whether they're stock, a stock ride height with narrow tyres or lowered with wider steelies, they still, they still look good. S4 history is interesting as well. Typically a 179 with a Stromberg car. They had a, a nodular iron differential, a thicker tail shaft. They had a heavy duty clutch. An interesting time back then for the S4 because there was no more power in the 179. Uh, whether it was early drawing board stuff for possibly triples that might have been on the drawing board for the EH back then that, that didn't come around. But interesting history with that S4 legacy. 
Ron, thank you very much for your time. I'll let you get around and uh, enjoy the show. Ron's just got here. I pounced on him as soon as he pulled up. So thanks for your time, Ron. Thanks, Fletch. Been very good. Good on you, mate. Well done. Cheers. I was only saying to a couple of mates the other day, what has happened to all the Fairmont GXLs? The XC Fairmont GXLs, back in the day, one of the nicest Australian-made cars. They are rare. I don't know what's happened to them. We've got one here. How are you, Grant? I'm good, Fletch. How are you? Great, mate. Great. What's the story on yours? Okay, so it's a family-owned car. We've had it since it was four years old. 1982, my brother bought it. Uh, It was his daily driver for 25 years. Set up on blocks for 16 years, and he said he's never going to do anything with it. Did I want it? So I've got it off him, and I've not changed too much. The last of the XCs, a great car. They had a good suspension package. It was equivalent lining up with Holden with radial tune suspension at that same stage. Just about to lead into the XD. XD sharing the same floor pan as the XC. They were a beautifully finished car. Um, Even the Fairlanes and the LTD of this same era. That's an interesting thing too. You can get into a late model Hyundai today and it's got everything an LTD used to have. It's got power windows, it's got four-wheel disc brakes. In fact, you know, people that are buying the late model cars, all that stuff is just taken for granted. But isn't it interesting, we can look at a late model car with four-wheel disc brakes and power windows and it doesn't mean much. But you put that same level on an older car and it's like whoa yeah. and it did mean something it did mean yeah certainly and and i remember being a young type when these were new and you know you saw my, my neighbor down the street had one um same color and um you know it was my dream car back yeah. then so Absolutely. yeah good on you grant thank you very much fletch that's all right you are welcome and thank you for uh, supporting this wonderful event here at atherton each and every year good on you mate no worries thank you very much you know what i love little telltale signs of an original vehicle this xc being in the family for most of its life uh, the same family it's little things i pick up on like the standard air cleaner is still in position the little uh, snorkel's been removed he said he's got a bigger battery, he had to make some clearance, he took the snorkel off, that's no biggie. Little things like the heat stove pipe from the manifold up to the carby, wrapped in the original asbestos covering there, the asbestos cord. Yeah, you don't see that sort of stuff. That's the stuff over the years people change things, they change carbies, they get rid of stuff like that. It's just nice to see original stuff as how it left the factory back in the year. Every weekend around Australia, motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people, all sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts. So when it comes to insurance, it's gotta be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. In 2023, why not consider a Detroit tour with Fletch? Detroit, the automotive epicenter. It will leave you gobsmacked. Imagine experiencing where automotive history on a grand scale began. Stay in fine accommodation, taking in some of the best museums and private car collections on the planet. Limited spaces available, book now. 2023 Detroit tour with Fletch. Moving right along, the man we blame, Donnie Blanford. How are you, Don? Good, good. Another beautiful day. Mate, 2023, coming together well? Yep, great to see everybody here. Yeah. And and thanks for coming. That's Once all right. Again. No, this is a it's a special show, Far North Queensland, the only one that I do uh, in, in the state, so far north, and uh, it's always a pleasure, Don. Yep, no, we love having you here. It's always great to have you. Fletcher's have been a good mate, and we love having him. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you very much, Don. This man here, uh, as we alluded to in the voiceover, uh, does a lot of things for the community, um, puts himself last most of the time, and I know this show means a lot to you. Um, it's evolved over the years. It's turned into a really good event for us. We started out 11 years ago, and we had 60 cars, and we raised about $2,000, and it's worked its way up to last year we had over 400 cars. Yeah. And so and this year is looking even bigger again. It's just, it's just really encouraging to see the car community, the way they support us. That's what I love about shows like this. There's just so much variety. Cars, bikes, trucks over the back there. Every vehicle is just so remotely different. It keeps it interesting. 
Speaking of which, you've got a, a humble little collection at home. Uh, you've got a man cave there. You've got your 74 Roadrunner, uh, your 351, your XB Ute. Um, you've got a few toys yourself. And that's nice because after all these decades of working hard, you've got to have a few toys. But it's also good to practice what we preach as well. I love building cars. And, this, and no matter how bad they are, it's just good to be able to say, look, I've built it. And, and there's a real satisfaction in it and driving them. And that's where half the fun is, just driving them. And just recently we did a road trip to Brisbane. And man, everywhere you went, you got the out the window. And that's cool. And in that car too, uh, the Mac 1, the 351 Mac 1. Uh, it was a remarkable car on the trip, never let you down. Now this morning I had the, uh, the liberty of driving your 74 Roadrunner. That's a standard car. Well, when I say standard, in terms of original paint, we have an original interior. The engine's different. We've got a 383 in there. Um, what a beautiful car that is to drive. It steers as straight as a die. It's comfortable. Um, really, when, you, when you've got them set up, they're just great. A car that you're sitting on now, this XBU, this is a typical example of a car years ago that you would have looked at and just looked the other way. This car, low kilometres, parked up for how many years? Tell us a story. Five years. Um, the young fella that actually did his time with me, um, good young fella, and he's just left me to go and cut uh, timber up the golf. But he came to me one day and he said, Donny, I found, he said, you've had an effect on me, I found an old XB. And so we kept it quiet and we went up, I said, look, we'll take the tow truck and if it's any good, we'll bring it back. And we went up to the top of the range at Gelatin and it had been sitting in an open carport with the drizzle going over for 25 years. It was covered in boxes, surrounded by rider mowers. Anyway, it had 83,000 kilometres on it. And it's an absolute poverty pack. It's got no cigarette lighter, no door lot buttons, no radio, it's absolute poverty pack. And he got it and there was a car show in two weeks time. He replaced the motor, the fuel tank, welded up a couple of holes, did the wiring, did the brakes, did the suspension, had it on the road. And that weekend did about 800 kilometers and it just drove the wheels off it. Good on you, Don. We could talk for a lot longer. Thank you very much. I'll let you get back to what you do best around here. And uh, your support also uh, from the uh, Atherton Auto Wreckers as well. You do a great job there every week. And of course, the, uh, the chaplaincy too, uh, contributing to the event. Um, so between you guys uh, making this event happen, keep up your uh, amazing work. No worries. And thank you for your support, Fletch. We love having you here. Thank you. Thanks, Don. No worries. I land in Cairns Airport, and here's Don with the Ute, and uh, picks me up and takes me up the Gillies to Atherton. And being a local, he's, he's proud of his area, and there's always a bit of a conducted tour on the way and of the landscape and up through the Gillies and the countryside. And uh, we get home to near Atherton to his place and a humble shed. And he's similar to me, we, we, have, we both have a handful of cars. We don't have 20 or 30 to actually uh, to speak of. He's got a, an early 1970s Mustang that him and his wife do big distances in. Uh, he's got an XB Ute. Uh, I really love this. Uh, you don't see many of these. 351 uh, Cleveland, of course. Uh, the four speed is a top loader. The 1974 Plymouth Roadrunner, that car is a special car. I, I actually feel a bit chuffed on this because apparently Don was inspired to buy this Plymouth Roadrunner after doing a tour with Fletch in Pennsylvania. Typically a Ford guy, and that's okay. I like Fords too. Uh, that was his uh, pretty well his first Mopar uh, that he bought. One thing about Don, and I know the locals would know this, uh, Donnie Blandford happens to be a very, very good barefoot water skier. It's up in the dark Sunday, down to the boat ramp, and then Donnie does his barefoot. Don skis at around 42 miles an hour, which, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of getting up towards 80 kilometers an hour, which is, is pretty fast on water. Don came off a few times, so maybe Danny can cut together some classic stacks that Don did. I asked him if he did them deliberately and he said no, apparently you don't do that deliberately. That's, uh, if you have a stack doing that, it, it, uh, it was never intentional apparently. He came off a few times and he got straight back up and he went again and he does a, he does a bloody good job on the water. It's time now for a car girl. How are you doing, Sarah? Really good, Fletch. How are you? Good, thank you. 
first of all, I've got to compliment you on your dress. You have gone the extra mile. Thank you. I'm wearing Kitten D'Amour and um, this is called Snakes and Ladders, so I have to go the whole hog. Being a car girl, you're here with a late model car, not a classic as such, but just quickly tell us what you brought here today. Uh, today I brought my uh, GR Yaris, my 2021 Gazoo Racing Yaris. Uh, she's my little three banger and um, my most modern car that I own and um, yeah, I just love it. Back to the dress, you've gone the extra mile. What do you stand for, Sarah? So I basically uh, created a group called uh, Pin Ups of Cans and essentially it's about um, getting the culture of cars, rockabilly, vintage pin up, uh, 50s dancers and the bands and creating like what they have in Brisbane, starting in far north Queensland to have a, um, a car culture going on again. And I believe that that will get people connected in the community again and actually uh, to me it's all about mental health so if someone sees someone dressed up bringing their car dancing and smiling I hope next year they come and do it too. This is very important I think more so than ever these days and I hear this a lot the pleasure that our classic vehicles whether they be bike truck car give us. Yeah absolutely it's it's a passion and it's a healthy passion. Okay I'll let you get on with it thank you very much Sarah. Thank you Fletch thank you. 99.9999 continual the nines over onto the next page percent of car shows you go to you're going to find Shannon's. How are you Peter? I'm very well thanks Fletch. That's the way you're new on the job. Yes yes this is my first event uh, in Atherton and uh, great to be here with 400 cars and a couple of hundred bikes. Yep. You couldn't have found a better show to make your debut. <laughs> Thanks for that. But it's been like, I've, I've had a lifelong interest in vehicles, but as I retired from my, my corporate job, what better job to get than to go to all the motor uh, events around far north Queensland and, and talk to people. I've, I've had it as a 21 year association now that I've had personally with Shannon's, great company and it's about getting around and talking to the people and you hear lots of good stories, they look after people but like you say it's about encompassing this passion and, the, and the passion, well we mentioned 21 years, what we've seen over 20 years is incredible as to where all this has evolved. A absolutely, and, and I mean, being a motor enthusiast, it's very hard to enjoy it by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's when you get together with other enthusiasts, and I think that's what Shannon's is particularly good at, and they've got the Shannon's Club online that people can be involved in forums and put their own pictures up there. But it, it, if to me, it's the insurance is part of it, yep. but it's all about the community, it's about bringing people together and having some fun. Well, the nice thing too, when you speak to a Shannon's representative, you can tell them that you've got a statesman front clip on the front of your Kingswood and the person you're talking to understands what you've done. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know, that's the little things, it's relating, it's relating to what we do with our vehicles, what we stand for and um, the amount of car shows, it's many, many hundreds a year that you guys go to and set up the tents and uh, that's a that's a big thing because uh, you guys are the only ones that are doing that at that level. On that note I want to wish you well with Shannon's. Thank you for turning up today for your first show here and uh, I'll let you get back to it. There's so much going on here. Everyone you interview You've got to make the interviews quick. They've got things to do. There's stuff to go and see here. Absolutely. and um, All the best. Oh, all right. Thanks, Th thanks, Peter. Thank you. Thanks, Fletch. And, of course, that and a whole lot more awaits you when you visit shannons.com.au. I spend a lot of time out here. The RT Charger's the real deal. An E49. Remember A Charger? I've always got projects on the go. So Shannon's laid up cover helps protect my restorations. I'm Mopar through and through. It's a passion Shannon's understands. I wouldn't insure my cars and bikes with anyone else. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. They may not be making the classic Holden anymore, but the legacy lives on. You can still have a Holden certified service using genuine Holden and AC Delco quality parts at over 180 centres across Australia. Go to holden.com.au to find your nearest centre. Book your Holden in, maintain the pride.
Bikes are never forgotten here at Atherton as well. This is the biggest year for bikes so far, 2023. The Highland Restorers have a, a wonderful display here. How are you, Bob? I'm very good, thank you, and uh, I'm glad to see my little job here, the little James uh, that the club bought to be restored, and it's good to see it in the show here, which is a big one this year. So being a restoration through the club, that gave an opportunity for active involvement for club members to partake in it? It did indeed, Fletch, and it was really good. Uh, I did a lot of the work, but it was useful having guys that helped out with uh, the wheels. Uh, one of the guys got a new exhaust pipe made up out of the old rusted example, so it was indeed a, a club effort. How is it as a bike? Like, Can you appreciate the technology from 1949 when you look at this bike, when you work on this bike? What's your thoughts on that? That sort of bike, like that little James, was something I grew up with in the 50s. And yes, they were very much a basic motorbike to keep people on the road after World War II. Yep. And they did what they had to do, got people around. Bob, thank you for your time here today. I love what you've done with the with the bike here. Uh, some photos, some pictures down there on the display board, some progressive shots. And here we have the finished article. It's a real, It's a real credit to you and the club. Yeah, well, it's good to see it up and running, and it is a bit of an interest, and I'm surprised at the amount of people that come across and say, hey, I had one of those in the day. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Hey, thanks, Fletch. How you doing, Joe? Good, thanks, Fletch. Self? That's the way, mate. Good, good. 1925 Douglas. Yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah British Douglas, yeah. So what can you tell us about this particular one here, Joe? This, this particular bike um, was restored uh, mainly by a mate of mine many years ago. I was lucky enough to be be able to buy this bike and um, yeah I'm the caretaker now. They are so archaic when we look at design obviously compared to today but we're going back well we're going back a hundred years virtually now to have something like this here it's just so incredible. It is a good thing like exactly what you say it's, it's a rare thing. Speaking of the 100 years mention a couple of the technologies that this had back then. Well on this bike like a lot of old bikes, everything's serviceable. So you got grease nipples where you should have grease nipples, all the rest of it. This here was the first year, I believe, first, second year of a clutch. Before this, they never had a clutch. The oiling system, they had no uh, oil pump in them, so you had to manually watch that as well. Uh, my boy, he's only 16, Corbin, over here, and he's got a passion for bikes. That's why I've got a shed full of them, because I know there's another caretaker. You've got something here that's, that is just, it's a piece of art yeah, exactly. that... They're not making these anymore. Exactly what I was saying. I've got it beside the TV and it's a piece of art, yeah. yeah. Pretty expensive art, but beautiful, yeah. <laughs> Good on you, Joe. I really compliment you, mate, for the preservation of this 25 Douglas. Good on you. Thanks a lot, Fletch. How you doing, Gavin? Good. How are you, Fletch? Good, mate. Good. I love this. Holden. Yeah, she's a ripper, isn't she? Isn't this beautiful? 1958 FC Ute. Have a go at this. The two-tone... What do we call it? Cream and salmon? Cream and, yeah, a bit of a brown, off salmon maybe. Yeah. <laughs> this is beautiful, Gavin. It really is. I just love how original it is on the inside. We look at that uh, well, almost like the tail end of an Art Deco period for the steering wheel. And uh, how, did, how did you get it? Um, it was advertised online and I've only had it for about three months. Big year for Holden and the FC. Uh, the attention to detail and the uh, the time that General Motors Holden put into the bright work on these cars. I love the work around the grill, the stainless steel up the sides. What a classy car they were. Beautiful, isn't it? I love it. Now, Gavin, how long have you been inspired by these old Holdens? Did this thing just come across or were you looking for one for a while? Um, I've got an FJ sedan that I'm sort of working progress. I've always wanted an FJ ute. But this thing came up and it was the right price and decided to jump on it. I like what you've done in the back there too with the old Victor lawnmower. That's a bit of a score too. Yeah, no, I've got a few at home. Commercial ute. Thought we'd uh, go back in time. Yeah, well, no, I love it. I mean, you know, the timber flooring and you know, the lawnmower in the back matching the period era of the car. Oh, same year, I think. Yeah, same year. Gavin, thanks very much for your time, mate. Had to pounce on you with this. You've got to agree what a beautiful ute this is. Thanks, Gavin. Thanks, Fletch. No Mate. Thanks for Thank, coming. No, nah, that's okay. My pleasure. Thank you for supporting the Atherton Bike, Car and Swap Meet for 2023. Well done, mate. Good on you. This is a very special vehicle that's on this episode. This is Tony. How are you, Tony? Really well, thank you, Fletch. Great to see you again. Tony was principal here of the high school for 15 years, and for the last, ooh, what, five or six years, I've been hearing about this 
this build, this VC Val build. Well, this is the debut. This is the unveiling. This is the show. It's great to see it finally on the road, Tony. Yeah, absolutely thrilled. It's been a long-term project. Uh, Ten years we've been doing the restoration on this. And it's such a thrill to come here on this beautiful day and actually show it to the community. Now, this ute, have a look at this, would you? We're talking a resto here. Yes, it's a ground-up resto. This is from, uh, it's uh, no bolt unturned. Uh, you've even uh, got a book that you've um, had published uh, with photos in there, uh, progressive shots as well. Um, it's a beautiful thing. Now, you've had it quite a while, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, back in 1994, I was looking for a way to move firewood from Ravenshoe, which is 45 minutes yeah. up the road. Mm -hmm. Uh, to our house here in Atherton. I was speaking to a colleague and uh, he said, oh yeah, I've got a ute. I was my dad. Oh no, don't worry about it. It's actually a bit of a wreck. And so anyway, long story short, uh, I ended up buying this beautiful car here for $100. It didn't quite look like this back in the day. Uh, it's a single owner vehicle, but for me, I've got the original receipts in the glove box from 1967. It's a Tablelands car, so it's spent all of its life here on the Tablelands. We look around the car, the jelly bean mags just uh, finish it off beautifully. Uh, the colour of the car, which is? Uh, it's a Lexus colour called Norrie. Mm. Yeah, it's a tribute to the uh, olive green of the 1967 car, and it's uh, the Lexus tribute to the Salikas that did the similar thing. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, the interior, we have a look at that. Uh, the seats are superb. They're nice and firm to sit in. Steering wheel feels great. Love the instrument cluster, what you've done there. Across the top of the dash is perfect. Well, of course, it's a, it is a ground-up resto. Um, and even in the back there, uh, the work around uh, the battery, uh, you've got that hidden there in that section, which is nice. Bit of a change from up front there underneath the bonnet. Uh, little subtle changes that, uh, that you've done. Uh, your own uh, persona that you've put into this. Yeah. Yeah, I made the car exactly what I wanted, uh, so it's not an original vehicle, but it's the vehicle that I want. Whilst it's over 50 years old, it's actually like a brand new car to drive. Everything's nice and tight without being stupid in it, and um, yeah, it uh, gives me many smiles to the gallon. Tony, it's the sort of car that we could almost make, well, a whole or well, half an episode out of just your vehicle, so thank you for sharing it. It's at the end of the day, and um, Tony, it's great to catch up with you again, and uh, Mate, congratulations on this. As I said earlier, I have been hearing now for many years about Tony's resto. Fletch, look at this. He can't with his phone and he show me the progressive photos of where he's up to. And I used to look at the photos and think, wow, that's that's really going to be something. So to see it here in the paddock this afternoon, good on you, mate. Thanks very much, Fletch. And thanks for supporting us up here in Atherton. Sorry, Thank you. My absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Well, from bikes, cars and trucks, you've seen just some of the bike, car and swap meet here in Atherton for 2023 in far north Queensland. And you've seen it first on Classic Restos. I hope you've enjoyed it. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch. Thanks for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannons Club, your local Holden certified service centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online.